In the last half of the 1600s, Newton developed a formula to calculate the force of gravity. And this formula is that the gravitational force is a constant, capital G, times one mass times the value of the other mass and divide by the distance between the centers of the masses squared. Uh, the force will be in newtons as long as the two masses each are in kilograms and R is measured in meters. The constant capital G was not measured for about a hundred years, maybe a little over a hundred years actually, uh, after Newton developed this formula. Uh, but once this was uh, measured, uh, more, more calculations could be done in astronomy with the, uh, the concept of the force. So we want to calculate uh, today the gravitational force the Earth exerts on the moon. Well, we would do so by starting with the constant first, the 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And then I'm going to put in the mass of the Earth. And we've looked up that number, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Multiply by the mass of the moon, 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd, about 82 times smaller than the mass of the Earth. And if we uh, go for the average distance of the moon away from the Earth, uh, the moon does not have a circular orbit, but that average distance would be 3.84 times 10 to the eighth meters. And we have to square that. If you look this up, you might find it in kilometers, 10 to the fifth kilometers, but we do need meters for this calculation. And both of these numbers uh, for the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Moon are in kilograms. So we're, we're ready for our units. If you need help in working with powers of 10 notation and scientific notation, um, you might want to search for my video, Powers of Ten, and uh, Clements, and scientific uh, notation might also be in the title of that video. But if you're ready to go, you should try this with your own calculator. You might want to pause the video and try your own calculator and see what uh, value you obtain. Welcome back, and hopefully you have something close to 1.97 times 10 to the 20th newtons. 1.97 times 10 to the 20th newtons. Okay, second question. Calculate the gravitational force that the moon exerts on the Earth. That the moon exerts on the Earth. I'm done. How did I get done so fast? Well, this F equals G, I'll do mass of the Earth, mass of the moon over r squared. That's what I did in uh, part A. For part B, let's do F equals G, mass of the moon times mass of the earth, and divide by r squared. It does not matter which number is multiplied first, the mass of the moon or the mass of the earth. So we get the same number, and that force is 1.97 times 10 to the 20th. Another example of Newton's third law the Earth pulls on the Moon, 1.97 times 10 to the 20th Newtons. The Moon pulls on the Earth, 1.97 times 10 to the 20th Newtons. These two forces do not add to zero because they act on different objects. It's illegal to add them, even though they have opposite directions in the same magnitude. But Newton's third law, Earth acting on the Moon, here Moon acting on the Earth, and those are the magnitudes of the forces, of course, um, I've not put in the direction of the force here. For this one, it would be, uh, let's go ahead and draw it. So here's our Earth. This is definitely not to scale. Um, should be more spacing between the Earth and the Moon. But we would have the force arrow looking like this. And for this calculation, we're doing the force arrow that's uh, up here, so called first calculation, second calculation. Those two force arrows are in opposite directions. Um, they act on different objects is a, a key point. But that's Newton's uh, law of gravity. To do this calculation for the force, 
You need masses in kilograms. You need distance between the centers of the objects. The uh, R value is from center to center, not from surface to surface, but from center to center. And technically, this is only for spherical objects. Um, but there you go. Ask your instructor if you have questions.